Hi everyone, it's Patina. I have another project to show you. Well, there it is. Nothing too exciting. However, I again got this particular chip here. Again, it's a 10-pin single inline package, much like our amplifier that I made earlier. So what this chip does, it's a motor controller. It's used in a lot of, I think, computer devices like CD-ROMs, maybe floppy drives, you know, that kind of stuff. It controls motors, and this particular one, it controls two. However, you don't need both connected. However, I did wire in both of them. And what it allows the user to do with some input, so you have basically uh, pin 4, 5, and 6 going up to the chip, pin 4, 5, and 6. I've got them right now wired into switches. Uh, the common uh, a part of the switch is connected to the pin uh, 4 and 5 and 6. And then for the other sides of the uh, single pole double throw switch, I put uh, a low and a high. So with that said, I can control it. However, if you can imagine a lot of computers, they obviously are not going to have manual switches to control motors. It's going to be all computer driven. So you just put a low and a high on the particular switch to get your uh, function. And uh, here it is, essentially. I won't even bother with the truth table. I'll just show you a demonstration. Uh, so once again, it's nothing too dramatic. I put a heat sink on the chip. These particular motors aren't very current-hungry. They're small. However, I did put a bigger one on it, and the chip did get a little warm. I think this chip is just meant for small motors, and that's fine. I'm powering again from a 12 volt supply. Actually, I think that's even more. It's more 18 volts, I think. Anyway, the regulator is there. I've got my filter caps there, thanks to the monk board. And I wired in the chip, a couple capacitors to absorb the motors and the current. And I again wired out the pin 4, 5, and 6, which are these particular resistors here. I actually wired them out to one of these mini screw type terminals because maybe in the future I might want to extend that out to a panel switch or something like that. Uh, but I also connected them to these three switches for demonstration purposes. Alright, so let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this motor, this is motor 1, on. Have it go forward. I press that button. I don't know if you can see it, but it is spinning. Now to reverse it, I can press pin 6 or switch 3. However, you'll see a big jump in the motor. It reverses, but it's a bit of a shock to the system. So what I'm going to do first, and I'm sure computers would do the same thing when they're controlling devices. They want to put the brake on first, put it in reverse, undo the brake, and then the motor is going the other way. And it's something similar for motor 2. Now let me see if I can get this correct. So motor 2, to turn it on, I'm going to press switch 2 or pin 5 and it is spinning from my memory. I know I can reverse it if I press that switch. However, I think the brake is this. So I'm going to press switch 1 and yes, the motor stopped and motor 1 is not going, which is good. I'm going to reverse it and then undo the brake, which is this pin and then sure enough that motor is running. So that's essentially it. It's nothing too exciting. However, it's a building block. I'll probably just put this away in the bag and file it away as another project that's complete. You never know. I may need to use it for something. Um, I can imagine in a very, very bigger scale this potentially could control a solar panel array if it's on an XY axis and you can uh, follow the sunlight. The applications are endless, I'm sure. There's plenty of applications for two motor type circuits. So if you ever have one of these chips, look it up, build the circuit, play around with it, and you have a lot of fun. What's next? I don't know, but I'll certainly be using the monk board for my next project. We'll see what chip we can dig out of the pile and make it work. Alright, that's it. Bye for now.